Hi, I'm Fish Krakowski. This is Nathan Martin. What's up? We're here to talk about chapter four of The Mandalorian, mm -hmm. which is called Sanctuary. Yes. In which we find Mando, nameless still, helmet <laughs> still on, thankfully. Except for one part. Well, yeah, true. Uh, anyway, he uh, he's looking to hide out with baby Yoda somewhere, mm -hmm. who I like to call him Yoga, and uh, they go to a planet called, my notes, Sorgon. <laughs> yes, we actually got a planet name. Yeah. Finally. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. And then, uh, and then, you know, inevitably kind of gets into trouble after running into a bunch of people. Uh, what, how, what, I don't know. Go for it. What did you think? Um, this definitely felt like the beginning of the second act, if the first three episodes were like the first, if first act of the play, because we were getting like eight or something episodes. Mm -hmm. Um, and it, it really, after the, after chapter three, that great action ending, and then it's just like, okay, we're going. And it, it really felt like the pace had picked up a lot. Um, it's one of the longest episodes that we've had so far. Cause 41 I think, minutes. 41 minutes. Yeah. Um, and the, my only quibble, I guess I could say with it is that he, he goes from like, I'm protective and this is the way that I am to like, yeah, I could probably stick around on this planet, take off my helmet. Like there's, I'm like, okay, you, I, I get that you rescued the baby in the last episode, but you went from like zero, which would be we're hidden, we're safe, and everything's gonna be okay, to like, ah, oh, yeah, I'll just take this off. And I, like, there was a couple of moments in the episode where I'm like, the love interest sort of thing felt like we're pushing this, even to the point where like, after the big battle, <laughs> they literally just cut, and Baby Yoda's chilling with the kids, and Mando's talking to uh, MMA wrestler. And it's just like, well, a couple of weeks ago, we sure tore this place up, eh? Like, just to like, oh, there was a good passage of time. I still enjoy the episode a lot. I thought it, uh, it's not my favorite. Three is still my favorite, but um, it definitely was, uh, it's, it was a really good episode. And yeah, see, the, okay, so I'm going to jump in and say yeah. that I didn't really like it all that much. Okay. I thought the direction was bad, and I thought um, Cara Dune, I'm kind of funny with her, like, She's she's got really like the acting is super wooden and well, I kind of like it. Yeah, like, I'm okay with her, but I just sort of like there are some plot points that kind of bother me. Mm. But I, let's start with the direction first. Kay. I mean, I think I think in particular the battle against the ATST I felt like was if, imagine something that flat and one dimensional being on Game of Thrones like the whole world would be complaining about <laughs> it. Right? And then um, and yeah, and there was just a just a. A, a bunch of things over and over again where I'm like, he's, he, they're not making the brave choice. Like, mm. to me, if you're going to put a target on Baby Yoda, yeah. like, I don't want to kill him, but no. I'm like, imagine if they had killed him at that point, yeah. how that would have kind of followed the tone of the first three episodes, which is a bleak, hopeless universe. Yeah. This is the, this is the new hope, uh, not lowercase. Yeah. <laughs> right, yeah this, this is the lowercase new hope um, episode. And I mean, you know, it is a Western. It yes. is Seven Samurai. It's wearing its, uh, all of its inspiration really heavily on yeah. its sleeve, right? So, and I just kept feeling like nothing is really new here. And mm -hmm. all the other episodes had showed me something really new. So, yeah. I mean, you saw Blue Krill, and we got a little business about the New Republic, which yep. I liked, like Cara Dune talking about being a shock trooper, uh, basically going in, cleaning up after Endor. And then not enjoying the politics, like right. that. Yeah, she's sort of like she's got she's sort of she's sort of incelly and bro for that yeah. side of the fans in a way. So I didn't mind that. But I'm like, why did they fight? Like, there's just no reason for them to have fought. Oh, you mean when, when he got out of the yeah, bar? Yeah, like he leaves the bar and they fight just because they kind of have to. I guess. I would, say, I would say I would say it just felt the most like the Clone Wars and Rebels to me. Like, it was, oh, okay, it was, the, it was the most juvenile in a way. Like people were doing things. No one got hurt. Did anyone get hurt? Just the they killed the one nameless guy who got hit. Yeah. That you that you never. Yeah. I don't even. I don't. But there's clearly a. Ah! You so know, those like, those guys are like kobolds, but I look. I, <laughs> I, I, I really that's a Dungeons and Dragons dog monster, but. Uh, they're based on Klaatu, so yeah. they're called Klaatunians or something like that. But uh, I'm just like, yeah, even, even that, like, it, it was just sort of like, okay, uh, ugly people are bad. Yeah. Beautiful people are all good. <laughs> and, then this, and then there's this village, you know, a long time ago in 
far, far away that just to me looked like downtown Toronto. Like I'm just like, if you're gonna, like, cause, cause, you know, cause they're, I know what they're trying to do and I love it. I love the idea of diversity and everything like yeah. that. But it, those are all humans. So there's no diversity at all. They love, they love Yoda though. Of course, like, that's you know, true. It, yeah, I, yeah. I found that really interesting how accepting they were to clearly an alien species yeah. that is very rare. Like they get to the sanctuary part and everyone's like, oh my God, this adorable thing. And as the audience, you're like, I know, right? It's yeah, an adorable yeah, yeah. thing. And they just like, uh, and of course, once again, kind of teased with Mando being like, no, no, he's good here. I'm going to leave him with you. And I'm like, no, you're not. This is like, they're going to come up with a reason for them not to do that. But it felt a little, I still enjoyed it, but it, it did feel like we're teetering into that monster of the week sort yeah. of, because we don't have a lot of episodes in the season. So I, I, I sort of was hoping that they would avoid that entirely. But this is the second episode in a row where it's kind of been like, bop, bop. Bop, and then, yeah, and then yeah, we're gonna yeah. get away, and we're gonna fly off or whatever. Um, I did, I did like the the introduction of, or not the the reintroduction, the reminder, I guess I should say, of just because he's taking the kid off planet, doesn't mean that all those fobs that yeah. we've established in the first two episodes, like, there, this is going to be a continuous thing unless he can figure out. I need to figure out how to stop them from beeping every time. Yeah, that's some kind of a around. mystery box. Like, what is it? Is there something in Baby Yoda's bum? That yeah. Like, like, how are they all tracking him? <clears throat> and and further to that point, like this is where I'm starting at nitpicking. I don't want to, oh. but I'm like, how is it hard for anyone to find Baby Yoda if he just has a tracer in him? Yeah. Like they 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 found him that way. So I mean, maybe it's because people like they sort of talk about it in the show. They're like, you know, we've we've brought some heat here, yeah. so this is what, but it, I mean, uh, you know, so so maybe, you know, word is spreading or whatever, but it basically felt like, no, we just have a, like a, a, a an iPhone finder on Baby Yoda. Pretty and much. everyone can find him. And if that's the case, then why aren't all those people in the bar on that planet already? I was wondering that even in the first episode, kind of when he first got Baby oh, Yoda, okay. IG, IG-11 shows up, like, what is it that they're detecting? Mm -hmm. How is it they're finding it? So, I mean, that's unanswered. I don't need the answer, but I don't. I also don't want it to not make any sense. My guess would be vicinity. Like, because when Mando first was given the fob, he was given the coordinates to the planet. Yeah. So my guess is someone probably ratted out the fact that it's like, hey, there's a Mandalorian here with a green baby. Because they do that a lot yeah, in yeah, Star yeah. Wars. That is that is literally like, the, the in the very first Star Wars movie, the little snot-nosed guy. Yeah, yeah. Like there's always someone to rat someone out in Gerindu, Star Wars. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So there's probably someone in the bar it was just like there's like because they kind of stick out. Yeah, yeah. Maybe well, he tells the he tells the stay here. It's it's the logic stuff that's getting me a little bit where I'm just like yeah. I mean he wants to totally hide and not be seen. So the very first thing he does is go to a bar and have a big fight for no reason at all outside of it, and then say want some soup, which yeah. was a great line. It yeah. was funny. And anyway, I'm not like I'm not like going crazy. No, no, no. This. To me, it was just more like three out of five or something. But there was one point that I was really like um, her name is Bryce Dallas Howard, and yes. Ron Howard's daughter. And I and I I, I love Deborah Chow's direction of the action sequence. Everything, honestly, yeah. the last episode. The, the the direction of this episode I didn't like very much, and in particular a scene where they make kind of a big deal about like him never taking his helmet off mm -hmm. in front of another person. And I'm glad they added that because it doesn't make sense that you would never ever take it off. Even right. though I thought that was cool and alien, like you don't get the sense that the Tuscan Raiders take their gear off. Yeah. Anymore. But anyway, um, it. He makes a big deal about not taking his helmet off, and then she leaves the room, and they are right outside the window. <laughs> I knew you were going to say this. Yeah, I know. I and knew you were going to bring this up. Pulls the helmet off, and he puts it like right. And I mean, you know, maybe he's testing the water. He's like, okay, well, it's okay if they see me from far away. But it's just like you're not really following your religion there. A little, yeah. So yeah, it's, like, I, it's a little weird. I was waiting for like he should have gone into the corner or something. Honestly, I was waiting yeah. for him to just draw the curtain, yeah, like just because yeah, yeah, yeah. they show her propping it up seems relatively simple, and that moment of like. He goes to do it, and I thought what they were going to do is he's like, I could do this, I uh, put the curtain down, and then I'm all alone, I'm secluded, and I can yeah. take it off, and I can eat. And it would have given, I think, the character a little bit more sadness to him, because he's like, he kind of wants to. Like, there's several times in this episode where uh, another character has talking about taking off the helmet and being free and all that kind of jazz. But I, I'm, glad, I'm glad that they didn't do it. I know that at some point we're going to see his face. Yeah. Um, it's coming soon. It, it yeah, feels yeah, like it is. Yeah. Um, I don't necessarily blame the direction because it's still all written by John Favreau, so the script is still the script. Um, well, I don't. I don't know if it would have specifically. I guess I'd love to see the script there. And yeah. Say, 
you know, she leaves the room and then he looks out the window where they're 12 feet away and pulls his helmet off yeah. anyway. <laughs> like, it's just sort of like, anyway, I, I, I don't want to get no, lost no, no, on no. that. But, but it was just sort of like, there was a moment where I'm like, it, like every episode's had one moment where I'm like, this is corny, but I kind of like it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I've, I've compared it to like Matt Houston and the music and stuff like that. <laughs> and they had, they had great music during that fight scene. In, and I think those guys, those Cobalt, those Klaatu guys, they're, they're I think they're like, uh, they have like a still. Yeah. I think those were pots of spotchka, like that glowing <laughs> drink or whatever, right? That's why I wrote that down. Right? Oh, okay. Anyway, the uh, but um, but that fight scene in there felt like uh, like sub, well, bionic man level. Like that fight was so bad. It's like, oh, okay, get him. Like and and like they're supposed to be hiding, and she like she like whistles, and it's like if you hear a whistle inside a tent, it's gonna be anyway, whatever. I know, I know, I'm being too hard on it, but it's just like this one was the one where it, where it, where it just felt like a different show. His whole tone was different. Yeah, and I I really love some of the acting, like mm-hmm. when, when it's like you know, can I play with Baby Yoda? Sure. Like yeah. he, that was great, and then it and then uh, um, he's loosening up. He is loosening up, and. Um, What's her name? Uh, Omera. So that's his love interest. She goes, she's basically like, you know, you could really fit in here. And yeah. Like, yeah, I could. And his voice is almost breaking there and he almost lets her do it. So yeah. I like that part a lot. They held on to that yeah. for quite a while, like to the point where like you could see the helmet start and yeah, then he yeah. was like, no, wait, I can't. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I'm going to endanger. I'm, it, whatever it is underneath here, I really feel like I'm gonna, probably going to put people that I know in more danger if yeah. you can see my face. So we saw BB-8... Uh, Take out a ATST walker mm-hmm. in the in, La- in the Last Jedi. Yeah, but these two super tough bounty hunters are like really afraid of a rusty old ATST. It was uh... it seemed a little off to me too, right? Like you know, like like Sabine who might be the 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 forger. Yeah, in the uh, in in the, on the you know the Mandalorian forge, she can blow up like ten of those in, yeah. in a minute. Yeah, so it's like it just seems a little odd that. The stakes seem different on those ATSTs. Um. Uh, yeah. I mean, I think the. I think it was more about the village than it was the actual. Because I mean, they agreed. They they decided to do it. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, I there was the moment, and I know it happens in a lot of these things, but the, the moment where they're training, the I, like I can't help but think of Army of Darkness. We're like who? Ha! Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. And I'm just like, can we just do a montage where you're using <laughs> sticks, and it's not like one. Two. <laughs> the, shots, like... the shots are lifted directly from Seven Samurai. Oh, the first okay. Time we saw that, and so that's a little wink to the fact that Star Wars was the hidden fortress. Right. Lucas loves Akira Kurosawa. I still felt the same way. I'm just like, yeah, I've seen this already. Yeah. I've never seen a hairy egg before, <laughs> but I've definitely seen villagers. <laughs> and there, there's always yeah, a move yeah, where yeah. they have to turn yeah. around 180 <laughs> just in case just, someone came up behind you. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, you know, that's that's that's, that's nitpicky that's, though. That's it, they're yeah. just doing kendo. It's fine. Yeah. But, yeah. Anyway. Anyway, Overall, okay. I well, like it. I think okay. So yeah, you liked it. I yeah. was a little like, you know, I remember watching Watchmen uh, episode th- four, I think, and I was just like, oh, I don't know, maybe I, can, I might get the number wrong, but but then the show totally corrected itself yeah. and it was great. So I wouldn't want to watch this show. Like if every episode was a lot like this episode, I would I would I would start to be like, oh, I don't know if I like this as much. Uh, yeah, I can That's see it. I, I really I still really enjoyed it. It not it wasn't like a five out of five, but it definitely was like a three and a half to four. Okay, cool. Well, yeah. I think that's all. No, all right. Okay. Peace out.